Hey guys, what's up? Dan Stevers here with a quick tip for you. Um, I recently finished a video and it was called The Story of Sex. And in it, uh, there was a cool effect uh, where a, a curtain closes and uh, it's two parts of the curtain and they come in and they uh, kind of bend back and forth real naturally. So uh, let's, uh, let's check that out. It was no longer about two people becoming one. Sex became about the desires of the individual, a way for people to get what they want from one another. To put it plainly, sex became a transaction. And so, sex strayed further and further away from God's original plan. Fast forward to... So you'll notice in the video that the curtains uh, come in from the sides here, and they're, they're kind of bend and sway as they come in, uh, kind of like a, a realistic curtain would. And uh, this is a, an effect I've been trying to figure out for um, a long time, trying to figure out how... Uh, to do this and make it look natural and convincing inside of After Effects and uh, it's actually pretty easy and uh, I'll show you guys uh, how, how we do that. Alright, so in After Effects here I've got this picture of a curtain and uh, so we're gonna drag it into its own comp here. First thing we're gonna do is we're going to uh, get our mask tool and we're gonna draw a mask around half of the curtain here and I'm gonna select this layer, I'm gonna hit Command D to make a duplicate of it I'm going to hit M to bring down our mask options here, and I'm going to change it from add mode to subtract. So now we have uh, two, two different halves of a curtain here. Now I'm going to pre-compose these layers, so I'm going to hit shift command C and move all attributes into new composition. Do the same thing for this guy. Okay, so now we've got two halves here, so I'll call this one right curtain, left curtain. Okay, cool. Uh, so let's turn off our right curtain for now. We'll just look at our left curtain. Uh, so this effect is done using the, the puppet tool. And this is a pretty neat tool. Um, it has a lot of different uses. And uh, this is a, a pretty interesting use that I found for it. And uh, it's actually pretty easy to do. So you just uh, select this puppet pin tool up here. And we're just going to make uh, four pins around our curtain or near the corners. And when we do that, uh, if you hit U while having your layer selected, you'll notice all these keyframes are made, uh, one for each puppet pin that we put in there. Uh, so let's go ahead and animate the position of our curtain because we want the curtain to be um, closing in. So we'll go to, uh, let's zoom in to uh, one second, and we'll hit a keyframe there. We'll go back to zero, and then we'll drag this all the way outside of the frame. So it's completely out. We'll select our second keyframe and hit F9. And that will make an easy ease keyframe. So we got our curtain coming in here. Okay, so now we gotta put the bend in it. So uh, if I twirl back down my options here and I go to, uh, I go to my puppet uh, pins here. Actually, there's an easy way to do it. Just hit the layer and hit U again. I'll bring up my puppet pin keyframes here. And you'll notice uh, if you don't have the puppet um, effect selected, you don't see the pins, so you need to have that selected, so you can uh, just select that there, or um, yeah, it's probably the best way to just hit uh, select the puppet effect there, and so what we're going to do now is we're going to um, I think first thing we're going to do is we're going to delete these keyframes here, because we, uh, we don't want those there and we're gonna make our own keyframes now. So we, we want these two to start bending outwards at the beginning. There we go. So now I'm gonna set a new keyframe for all four of those. And I'm gonna drag it over to the beginning there. Actually, I'll, I'll bring it not towards the beginning, but a little bit before the curtain ends. So you'll see, I want my puppet pins to be about right about there. And then I'll go down about a second, and I'll select the bottom two again, and I'm going to bring these over now. I'm going to bring them so they sway over, because we want, as the curtain comes in, we want the, our, our, um, our puppet pins to sway over on the bottom, like, like the bottom of the curtain is pretty heavy, and you can uh, sense the weight of it as it continues uh, with its velocity there. So there we go, got that. I'm going to go down another second, and I'm going to swing these back uh, just a little bit, 
just a little bit there. And I'll go down another second, and I'm going to swing these back just, just a little bit. And finally, I'm going to go down another second, and I'm going to try and uh, line this up with where it was before at our starting point there. And there we go. Got those keyframes made. So let's select all of those keyframes that we just uh, made and hit F9 on them. And that'll make them easy ease. And there we go. Uh, so I'll hit N and bring in my um, my out point there. And uh, let's do a, a quick render. Let's see how this is looking. Okay, so uh, there you go. That's um, that's pretty much the effect there. Um, now you could either uh, you could either do the same thing that we did to the other side of the curtain here, um, which is what I'd recommend if you want it to look natural. But uh, if you don't care if it looks symmetrical on both sides, um, I could just pre-comp this left curtain. I can move all attributes in there, and I could duplicate that layer now. And I'll hit S to bring up the scale. I'll unlink the scale there. Set this to negative 100. And now, uh, there you go. We got uh, we got both sides of the curtain coming in now. There you go. And that's pretty much the effect, guys. And uh, like I said, it's pretty easy to do. And uh, yeah, you guys can play around with it. You can uh, try adding a, an open keyframe. So you could have them close like this and then slide open like it does in my video. But yeah, that's the gist of it, guys. And I hope that was helpful. And I'll, I'll see you guys later. Mm -hmm.